is Aero TV's daily update from the NBAA 61st Annual Meeting and Convention. I'd now like to really begin the heart of this opening general session. Later, Executive Director Ron Kaplan of the National Aviation Hall of Fame announced the recipient of the 6th Annual Combs Gates Award, promoting research and preservation of the nation's aviation heritage. This year's presenter was Hall of Fame member Colonel Joe Kittinger, who presented the $20,000 award to the First Flight Foundation of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, in recognition of its work to restore the Wright Brothers National Memorial Monument. Uh, on behalf of, the, uh, of Gene Cernan and uh, Bob Hoover, wherever he is, uh, and the 199 inductees of Aviation Hall of Fame, uh, it's my honor to award this Combs uh, Gates Award to a First Flight Foundation for their fantastic effort that they made in resurrecting that beautiful monument at Kitty Hawk. Special guests for the opening ceremonies were husband and wife political commentators James Carville and Mary Madeline, who garnered more than a few laughs with their observations on current politics and on each other. He is a genius. He's won all kinds of races, you know, writes lots of books. Um, what else? Um, he was a Marine. He was a corporal. That made him the highest ranking military official in the Clinton administration. This is a great industry. I like the way that you have real reverence for history and the, the Wright brothers in 1903. And of course, we all know the story about how that inspired a then young, young John McCain to get into aviation. <laughs> The session concluded with a ribbon cutting by FAA Acting Administrator Robert Sturgill, which officially opened the many manufacturers' displays to attendees. More on NBAA 2008 from the Orlando Convention Center in a moment. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my watch now! I was really crying there for a second. Welcome back to our daily update on NBAA 2008. Back in February, AAI Acquisition Incorporated, backed by Russian investors, acquired the assets of the former Atom Aircraft Company. AAI President and CEO Jack Brawley was on hand after a morning press conference to answer a few questions for Aero TV. Jack, with everything that the A700 program has been through, is this still a relevant airplane in today's market? Oh, for sure. It, it's, um, it'll be the only very light jet that's made from graphite, and, which is the newest material. And all the systems, the avionics, the engines, everything are the latest and greatest stuff. So it's very, very competitive still. I think in the next month we'll be able to, to uh, announce our avionics supplier. We are looking at a very modern, integrated three-panel system. With a production ramp-up that could uh, result in as many as 100 airplanes a year in 2014, uh, at what point do you expect to achieve profitability, and is there something beyond the A700? Well, right now we're just strictly uh, concentrating on the A700. We've got a, still a, a big hill to climb. Uh, we need to finish up the engineering and, and get the airplane certified before we ever start thinking about an, another airplane. Obviously, with this technology and with this team, we'd be able to, to start another airplane if that's what the investors wanted to do. I'm very confident the airplane will be profitable. Um, we believe that when we get to a rate of uh, one a week that, that the company will cross into profitability. We also got a few minutes to talk with Compair Aviation CEO Ron Leck, who was on hand to discuss the company's new airplanes, new the Compair 9 and Compair 12. It is a high wing, uh, flying with a Honeywell TPE 331-10 engine. Um, it's a fast airplane, 240 knot cruise, but it carries a big load and goes in and out anywhere. And efficiency is what it's really all about, low fuel burn, uh, make it green, and uh, that's what we did. Okay, the 12 is our business a a aircraft. It is a uh, eight-passenger, uh, single-engine turboprop, all composite. Flies with a Honeywell TPE 331-14 engine, which is 1,650 horsepower. So it's a 310-knot airplane. We have about a 2,500-mile range. So about 2011, first quarter of 2011, we'll be certified and delivering product. The 
future of business-oriented aircraft seems a bit murky. How do you feel? I don't think it is. But I think we'll see a change. I think there'll be a significant change. I think a lot of board of directors um, and, and boards are looking at their flight department and you know they're eyeing those as one of those perks that execs have and I think you're gonna see more going toward fractional ownership net jets and stuff and it's necessary business travel is absolutely necessary particularly anybody that's flown on an airline lately and have to go through all the TSA stuff you have to go through it really is a necessary and, and, and vital tool but I think you'll get away from having specific flight departments so that they can kind of bury that more in the and, and it doesn't look like they have a their own personal airplane more on NBAA 2008 from the Orlando Convention Center in a moment. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of NBAA 2008 on Aero TV. Cessna Aircraft opened up the mock-up of its big new Citation Columbus to provide a sneak peek to customers with deposits on the plane. You know, our focus from day one on this product has really been about deciding what the customers need and what the customers want. Today, it's all about you and thanking you for this great program. So let's get on with the celebration. It's my honor to introduce to you your Citation Columbus. Jack, congratulations on the uh, first public unveiling of the full boat, so to speak, Columbus mock-up. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, today was, uh, we launched the program in January. We did it without a, a true public unveiling at a convention. Uh, so today was the first opportunity to bring it to the show and show it not only to the public, but since we started selling in January, we brought in all of the order holders to, to see the product. So it's, it's a great day for us at Cessna. This airplane's already got a healthy order book, doesn't it? It does. We have over 70 orders to date, which is a, a good start. I mean, that's the first three years of production. You know, we've had a history of, of meeting our production schedule or meeting our development schedules and performance numbers. And here's another one that's a bigger, uh, a, you know, a bigger opportunity. And we are, we are keenly focused to make sure we meet every milestone on this program. A consortium of business, government, and educational organizations in the greater Wichita, Kansas area is forming the Wichita Aero Club. The club is patterned after the Aero Clubs of Washington and Atlanta and the Wings Club in New York. Executive Director Dave Franson offered us some insights. Dave, a Wichita Aero Club, why? What's it going to do? Well, why not? I mean, it's the air capital of the world. We built more airplanes in Wichita than any other city in the world. And there are so many people that are passionate about aviation. It just seemed like a logical thing to uh, bring them together and have an opportunity to, uh, to talk about the issues, maybe just, uh, you know, network. If there was a mission statement for the Wichita Aero Club, what would it be? Just really give our, our community an opportunity to uh, have exposure to the key people, the decision makers in the, uh, in the industry, and to recognize people who are eminent aviators. Uh, we are, we're going to have an, an award that we'll give out every year, and part of that is, uh, is part of the Wichita Aero Club mission, too. Representatives of the Corporate Angel Network were on hand to accept a donation from Ed Bolin of NBAA in support of the organization's life-changing work. Ed talked with us afterwards. Well, NBAA has an NBAA charity that supports entities that are using general aviation aircraft for humanitarian purposes. And I don't think any group does that better than Corporate Angel Network. They fly cancer patients to treatment centers using unutilized uh, space on business aircraft. So it's a tremendous operation. We're proud to be part of it. We think it reflects the very best in business aviation. The NBAA 61st Annual Meeting and Convention runs officially through Wednesday with indoor vendor booths at Orlando's Orange County Convention Center and aircraft static displays hosted at downtown Orlando Executive Airport. We'll have another update for you tomorrow on Aero TV.